the combat phase in Magic can be pretty complicated, so here's a little breakdown of how the steps in the phase work, and some tricks and interactions you may not know. The combat phase actually has five distinct steps. Beginning a combat, declare attacker step, declare blocker step, damage step, and I'm out of fingers, end of combat step. To even get started in the combat phase, both players need to pass priority with nothing on the stack during the first main phase. A lot of times you'll hear players shortcut this by the active player say, go to combat, and the non-active player agreeing. The, the first step in the combat phase is the beginning of combat step. Uh, this is when anything that says at the beginning of combat triggers. Uh, this is also the last chance for either player to do anything about creatures that might be attacking. Uh, for instance, it's often a good idea to tap a creature so it doesn't attack you, right? Uh, the beginning of combat step is the last chance to do this. Uh, once this step ends, it's too late. The next step is the declare attacker step, and that's actually the first thing that happens. The active player gets to choose which creatures, if any, attack and what they're attacking if there's like you know, a planeswalker or a battle or something. Uh, note that this doesn't use the stack, so it's too late at this point to stop them from being declared as attackers. Uh, after this is done, any triggers from attacking go on the stack. So uh, in the last set, we had a card like Thistledown Players, which has a triggered ability that untaps a non-land permanent when it attacks. Uh, all the stuff like this goes on the stack when the, and then resolves. Also note that not all creatures that are attacking count to trigger things that care about when creatures attack. And I know this is weird, but uh, for instance, let's say you have a Karlov Watchdog and a Warren Warleader and both attack. The triggered ability from the Warren Warleader lets you put a 1-1 Rabbit into play, tapped, and also attacking. A Karlov Watchdog says that whenever you attack with three or more creatures, they get plus one and plus one until end of turn. But this would not trigger here. Oh, you have three creatures attacking, but you only declared two as attackers. Like I said, it's weird. There's also another consideration to be made in this step if you are the defending player and have a removal spell. Uh, in some cases, you might want to use it before you have to declare blockers. Uh, imagine if I'm the defending player at like a five life and I'm being attacked by like a six six and I have a one one to chump block with and I also have a removal spell. I could potentially go to the next step, the declare blocker step, and not block, planning on using my removal. But if they have a way to nullify that in any way, uh, I just die and it would have been better to chump block in that case. If I use my removal spell during the declare attacker step, I can figure out then if they have an answer for it. And if they do, I still have time to declare a blocker and not die. The next step is the declare blocker step. Uh, this is similar to the declare attacker step where uh, no one can do anything until blockers are declared. Uh, after the defending player declares blockers, the attacking player gets to order those blockers to assign damage. Uh, after that, any triggers from blocking go on the stack and players can respond until the stack is empty. Uh, one important thing to note about this step is that it's always up to the defending player as the non-active player to have that last word about the stack. So uh, they can wait to see if the attacking player has any instants or abilities they want to put on the stack first, and then they get to decide based on that if they want to do anything. Damage is actually dealt in the combat damage step. All creatures assign damage at the same time, uh, either during normal damage or first strike damage or last strike damage. Yes, last strike damage exists. It's on a stupid uncard. I don't want to go into it. Uh, there is a window to respond after the first strike damage is applied, which can be a cool trick. All right, all right, so follow this. Uh, if you have a 2-2 first striker that's being blocked by a 5-5, you can let the first strike damage happen and then use something like a lightning bolt to finish off the 5-5 before it can deal damage back. Uh, creatures can die during first strike damage, so that can put triggers on the stack and other things before normal damage occurs. Other than that, all creatures assign damage to each other at the same time, and any creatures that would die do so at the same time. Uh, this would be uh, when all those like leave the battlefield or dies triggers we kick off and get dealt with. Once the stack clears, we go to the last step. The end of combat step is kind of like a cleanup for combat. There are some things that trigger at this time, like creatures that say sacrifice me at the end of combat. Uh, both players get priority here to do stuff if they want. Uh, it's important to remember that during this step, creatures are still considered attacking or blocking. So you could cast a card like Wing Shards, 
at this point if it made sense to finish off like any leftover attacking creatures. Sneaky. Combat is really complex and I didn't cover a lot of stuff here including like having to pay cost to attack or block, restrictions on what can attack or block, and a bunch of other stuff. But if you have a cool trick that I missed, uh, be sure to tell me about it in the comments. Who knows? I might even uh, make a video out of it. <laughs>